Lesson number 12, Surah Al-Baqarah, verses 63 to 73. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Nahmaduhu wa nusalli ala rasulihi al-kareem. Amma ba'd, a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillahi ar-rahman ar-rahim. Rabbi shrah li sadri, wa yasir li amri, wa hlul uqdatan min lisani, yafqahu qawli. Rabbi zidni ilma, Allahumma faqihna fi al-deen. Allahumma arina al-haqqa haqqan wa arzuqna ittiba'ah. Wa arina al-baatila baatilan wa arzuqna ijtinaabah. اللهم لك الحمد كما هديتنا للإسلام وعلمتنا الحكمة والقرآن وصلوات الله وسلامه على خاتم النبيين وإمام المرسلين وعلى آله الطيبين اللهم اجعلنا ممن اتبع القرآن فساقه وقاده إلى الجنة ولا تجعلنا ممن اتبع القرآن فزق في خفاه إلى النار برحمتك يا عزيز يا غفار How are you all? I hope that you are well. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always keep you in his safety, bless you with the ability to learn, understand and practice the Quran and convey it to the others in the best way. Ameen. Today's lesson is a lesson number 12 from verse 63 to 73. We will start with word to word translation and after that the words will be explained according to the grammar and then inshallah there will be tafsir. Let's look at the word to word translation. Were and is when recall. Akhazna we took mithaqakum your covenant binding oath. Were and rafa'na we raised. Fawqakum above you all atur the tur or mount Sinai. Khudu you all take hold grasp firmly. Ma what atayna kum we gave you all bi quwwatin with full strength ability or force wa and wadhkuru and you all remember ma what fihi is in it la allakum so that you all tattaqun you all adopt taqwa thumma then after a while tawallaytum you all turned away min from ba'di after dhalika of that falawla then if not fadlu fadl fadl is favor or grace bounty allah allah fadlullah is the favor of allah alaykum upon you all wa an rahmatuhu his mercy lakuntum surely you all were min from al khasirin those who lose or are the losers were and laqad certainly alimtum you all knew alladhina those who i'tadu they crossed limits or transgressed minkum from among you all fi in as-sabt the sabbath or the saturday cut from work faqulna so we said lahum to them kunu you all be qiradatan apes or monkeys khasiin ones who are despised faj'alnaha so we made it nakalan an exemplary punishment lima for what or who bayna is between them yadayha in her hands wa and ma what khalfaha is behind it wa and mau'izatan an admonition advice or warning lil for who or those lil muttaqin for those who adopt taqwa or save themselves wa and if when recall qala he said musa moses li qaumihi for his people inna indeed allah allah ya'murukum he orders or commands you all and that tasbahu you all slaughter baqara a cow qalu they said atattakhiduna a is a question word do tattakhiduna you make us huzuwa a makari qala he said a'udhu i seek refuge billahi in obit allah and that akuna i be or become min from among al jahilin those who are ignorant qalu they said 
ادعوا لنا you call or pray لنا for us ربك your رب or sustain her يبين so he makes clear or explicit لنا for us ما is what هي she قال he said إنه indeed he يقول he says إنها indeed she بقرة is a cow لا neither فارض old or worn out و and لا nor بكر young immature عوانم middle of age بين between ذلك of that فافعلوا so you all do ما what تؤمرون you all are commanded or ordered قالوا they said ادعوا you call or pray لنا for us ربك your رب sustain her you بين so he makes clear or explicit لنا for us ما is what لونها her color قال he said إنه indeed he يقول he says إنها indeed she بقرة is a cow صفراء one yellow فاقع is bright pure لونها her color تسر as it or she pleases makes happy الناظرين those who behold or look قالوا they said ادعوا you call or pray لنا for us ربك your رب sustainer يبين so he explains so clearly explicitly لنا for us ما is what هي she إن indeed البقرة the cow تشابها it looked alike or resembled علينا upon us و and إن indeed we in if شاء he willed الله Allah la muhtadun are surely ones who obtain guidance or be rightly guided. Qala he said innahu indeed he yaqulu he says innaha indeed she baqaratun is a cow la not the lulun one subdued to thiru she plows or tills al ard the earth. و and لا نور تسقي she waters الحرث the agricultural fields مسلمة one sound perfect free of faults لا نور شيئة any defect or blemish فيها is in her قالوا they said الآن now جئت you came or brought بالحق with the حق truth or reality فذبحوها so they slaughtered her were and ma not kadu they were near yaf'alun they do were and if when qataltum you all killed nafsan a soul faddar faddaratum then you all disputed blamed each other fiha in it were and allahu allah mukhrijun is one who brings out ma what كنتم you all were تكتمون you all hide فقلنا so we said اضربوه you all strike it ببعضها with some of it كذلك does likewise يحيي he gives life الله الله الموتى the ones dead ويريكم and he shows you all آياته his آيات or signs لعلكم so that تاقلون you all understand use intellect or rationalize grammatical analysis now let's understand these words according to grammar any words that repeat in today's lesson will be grammatically analyzed only once و and it is a conjunction her fi'atf there are nine conjunctions we have talked about it previously memorize them well wa fa thumma hatta aw bal lakinna imma and am there are three types of words kalima ism noun fi'il verb and harf particle wa is a conjunction harf e atf meaning it is a harf particle and it is used to join the nouns and verbs the conjunctions huruf e atf not only join nouns and verbs but also sentences 
व इज बोथ अ कंजंक्शन एंड अ प्रपोजिशन हर फे आत्फ एंड हर फे जर वेन इट इज़ यूज एज अ कंजंक्शन हर फे आत्फ इट मीन्स एंड जस्ट एज इन दिस केस बट वेन इट इज अ प्रपोजिशन हर फे जर देन इट मीन्स एन ओथ फॉर एग्जाम्पल वल फेजर मीनिंग आई स्वेयर बाय द डॉन हियर व इज़ यूज एज एन ओथ व इज फ्राम एजेंट पार्टिकल्स हरूफ आमिला Agent particles change the case of the words that come after it, and non-agent particles, huruf e ghair amila, do not affect the words that come after it. Today we will recognize the agent and non-agent particles. For further explanation, view Arabic lesson, grammar lesson number four seventeen. A video link is given in the description box. The lesson is called Division of Particles According to Agents. If when this is adverb of time isme zarf e zaman it happens before a past event akhadna we took it's a past tense fail madi the na in the end means we and na is the first person pronoun plural pronoun dhameer of jama mutakallam verbal noun masdar is asqan from as uh, from um, akhadha akhzan اخذ ياخذ اخزن اخزن means to hold stay take or to cover it can be any of these the root word is hamza kha zal akhadha misaqakum your covenant binding oath the root word is waw seen qaf wasaqa misaqa is mudaf what is possessed and kum is mudaf ila the possessor kum is second person masculine plural pronoun dhameer of jama muzakkar hadar wa is an harf atf rafa'na we raised the root word is ra fa ain rafa'a it's a past tense verb the verbal noun masdar is rafa rafa'un from rafa'a yarfa'u rafa'an which means to raise or to elevate fawqakum above of you all root word is fa waw qaf fawqa fawqa is mudaf what is possessed adverb isme zarf kum is possessor mudaf ilay atur it's the tur mount sinai it is a proper noun isme ma'rifa khudu you all take hold or grasp firmly the root word is hamza kha zal akhadha it's a second person masculine plural imperative verb fe'l amr jama muzakkar hadar ma is what this is a relative noun or isme mausul atainakum we gave you all the root word is hamza ta ya ataina is first person plural past tense fe'l madhi jama mutakallam from ata yu'ti the verbal noun masdar is ita'un bi quwwatin with full strength ability of force the root word is qaf waw ya be in the in the beginning is preposition harf jar it is from agent particles huruf e amila quwwatin is in genitive case majrur because of the harf jar wazkuru and you all remember the root word is zal kaf ra dhakara udhkuru is a second person masculine plural imperative verb fe'l amr jama muzakkar hadar from dhakara yadhkuru the verbal noun masdar is dhikran dhikran means to remember ma is what a relative pronoun isme mausul fi hi is in it fi is a preposition and agent particle harf e jar and harf e amila he in the end is in genitive case majrur because of the harf e jar it is a third person masculine singular pronoun dhameer of wahid muzakkar ghaib la allakum so that you all la alla is particle resembling verb harf e mushabbah bil fe'l and it is an agent particle harf e amila the agent particle changes the noun that comes after them into an accusative case nasab and gives it a fatha changes a predicate khabar into nominative case rafa and gives it a dhamma or two dhamma 
تتقون یو آل اڈاپٹ تقوا سیو یور سیلف دا روٹ ورڈ از واؤ کاف یا اٹ از سیکنڈ پرسن ماسکولن پلورل پریزنٹینس فیل مدھار جمع مذکر حادر فرام اتقا یا تقی دا وربل نان مزدر از اتقا ان اتقا ان مینس ٹو فیئر اور ٹو سیو ون سیلف ثم دین آفٹر اے وائل اٹ از اے کنجنکشن حرف عطف تول لئی تم یو آل ٹرنڈ اوے واؤ لام یا از دا روٹ ورڈ اٹ از اے سیکنڈ پرسن ماسکلن پلورل پاس ٹینس فیل ماؤدی جمع مذکر حادر فرام تول لا این یا تول لا دا وربل ناؤن مزدر از تول لیجن وچ مینس ٹو ٹرن اوے من فرام اٹ از اے پرپوزیشن این این ایجنٹ پارٹیکل حرف جر این حرف عاملہ بعدی آفٹر اٹ از ان جینیٹیف کیس مجرور این وٹ از پوزیسٹ مداف ذالکہ آف دیٹ اٹ از اے ماسکلن سنگلر فار ڈیمنسٹریٹیو ناؤن اس میں اشارہ واحد مذکر بعید این اٹ از اے پوزیسر مداف الی فلولا دین اف ناٹ دا فا ان دا بگننگ از اے کنجنکشن حرف عطف دا لو ان دا میڈل مینز اف سو اٹ از اے کنڈیشنل پارٹیکل حرف شرط دا ورڈس دیٹ آر کاسڈ دیٹ آر یوز ٹو امپوز اے کنڈیشن آر کال کنڈیشنل پارٹیکلس حروف شرط دیز آر ٹو ان این لو فضل اللہ فضل از فیور گریز باؤنٹی آف اللہ دا روٹ ورڈ از فا دود لام فضل Here, Fadl is mudaf, what is possessed, and Allah is mudaf ilay, possessor. Alaykum is upon you all. Ala is a preposition, harfajar. Kum is in genitive case, majroor. Wa is and, harfajat. Rahmatuhu, his mercy. Root word is ra, ha, meem. Rahmatu is mudaf, what is possessed. Who in the end is the third person masculine, singular pronoun, dhameer of wahid, muzakkar, غائب لکنتم شورلی یو آل ویر لا ان دا بگننگ از ایڈڈ فور ایمفیسس تاکید اور دا ایمفیٹک لام من فرام اٹ از اے پرپوزیشن حرف جر الخاسرین دوز ہو لوز اور آر لوزرز دا روٹ ورڈ از خا سین را فرام دا وربل ناؤن خسران اٹ از اے ماسکلن پلورل ڈو اس میں فائل جمع مذکر اٹ سنگلر از خاسرن و اینڈ حرفیات لقد سرٹینلی لا از لام تاکید ایمفیٹک لام قد مینز آف کورس ایور انف از این سرٹینلی اٹ کین بی یوز ان اینی آف دیز میننگس قد از اے حرف اور پارٹیکل وین اٹ کمز بفور دا پاس ٹینس دین اٹ مینز سرٹینٹی ہیئر ٹو پارٹیکلس آف ایمفیسس آر پریزنٹ این اٹ مینز ایبسلیوٹلی سرٹین عالم تم یو آل نیو اٹ از اے سیکنڈ پرسن ماسکلن پلورل پاس ٹینس فیل مادی جمع مذکر حادر دا وربل ناؤن مزدر فرام عالمہ این یا علمو از علمن علمن مینس ٹو نو الدینا دوز ہو اٹ از اے ماسکلن پلورل ریلیٹو ناؤن اس میں موصول جمع مذکر نعتدو اعتدو دے کراسڈ لیمٹس ٹرانسگریسڈ روٹ ورڈ از آئین دال واؤ دا تھرڈ پرسن ماسکلن پلورل پاس ٹینس فیل ماضی جمع مذکر غائب دا وربل ناؤن مزدر فرام اعتدا یعتدی از اعتداؤن وچ مینز ٹو ٹرانسگریس اور کراس لیمٹس من کم فرام امنگ یو آل من از اے پرپوزیشن حرف جر پرپوزیشنز حرف جر آر ایجنٹ پارٹیکلس حرف عاملہ این دے چینج دا ناؤن دیٹ کمز آفٹر دیم ان ٹو جینیٹیو کیس دیٹ گیوز دیم دا کسرا فی ان اٹ از آلسو اے حرف جر اس سبتی دا سبات دا سیٹرڈے کٹ فرام ورک دا لٹرل میننگ آف سبت از ٹو کٹ دیٹ از ٹو کٹ آف فرام ورک روٹ ورڈ از سین با تا There was a preposition before it, herfajar, therefore it is in genitive case. Majroor being in a genitive case means the last letter of the word has vowel mark kasra under it. Fa qulna, so we said, fa in the beginning is a conjunction, herfajat. Qulna is first person plural past tense, fail maadi jama mutakallam, since there is na in the end. Verbal noun qawlan is from qala and yaqulu, qawlan means to say. لهم to or for them لا is a preposition حرف جر 
whom in the in the end is third person masculine plural pronoun dhamir of jama muzakkar ghaib kunu you all be it is the second person masculine plural deficient imperative verb felenaqis amr jama muzakkar ghaib from kana and yakunu the verbal noun masdar is kaunan which means be qiradatan is apes the root word qaf ra dal it is common noun is manakira because of the tanween on its last letter khasiin ones who are despised the root word kha seen hamza from the verbal noun khasan it is masculine plural doer ism fa'il jama muzakkar faj'alnaha so we made it the root word is jim ain lam ja'ala ja'alna is first person plural past tense fa'il madhi jama mutakallam the verbal noun or masdar from ja'ala yaj'alu is ja'alan which means to make faj'alna ha the ha in the is the third person feminine singular pronoun dhamir of wahid muannas ghaib nakalan an exemplary punishment it is also used for an animal leech or bridle a uh, root word is noon kaf lam nakala nakala yankulu the verbal noun masdar is nakalan lima for what who li is preposition harf jar and ma is relative noun isma mausul baina is between it is an adverb isma dharf and what is possessed mudaf yadaiha two hands in front of them yad is one hand and yadai is two hands this was actually baina yadain yad yadaiha meaning in front of him or in his times meaning between two hands the literal meaning of yadaiha is in his hands similarly baina yadaiha means between his two hands and whatever is between two hands is always in front and before you this is the reason that baina yadaiha is translated as in front of him baina yadaiha is also used as an idiom for things in front that is in front of him or in his time wama and what khalfaha is behind it or her the root word is kha lam fa khalafa khalf is mudaf what is possessed and ha is mudaf ila possessor wa is and harf at mawizatan an admonition or advice warning the root word is waw ain za it is a common verbal noun ism masdar nakira lil muttaqin for those who adopt taqwa allah consciousness save themselves the root word is waw qaf ya it is a masculine plural doer from verbal noun ittiqaun ism fa'il ism fa'il jama muzakkar from masdar ittiqaun its singular is muttaqi wa is and harf at is is when uh, ism dharf qala he said it is third person masculine singular past tense fa'il madhi wahid mudhakkar ghaib verbal noun qawlan is from qala yaqulu musa musa alayhi salam li qaumihi for his people inna indeed it is particle resembling verb harf mushabba bil fa'il from agent particles haruf amila that affect the word in front of them that is change its case allah is allah ya'murukum he orders or commands you all the root word is hamza mim ra ya'muru third person masculine singular present tense fa'il mudhari wahid muzakkar ghaib from amara ya'muru the verbal noun masdar is amrun kum is a pronoun dhamir and that it is from huruf e nasiba sharp characters following are the huruf e nasiba or sharp characters an lan kai izan li the sharp characters or huruf e nasiba give a fatha that is a nasab instead of a dhamma to the present tense that comes after it because of the nasab these are called nasiba an lan kai izan la tazbahu you all slaughter root word is dal ba ha dhabaha this is actually tazbahuna because of the an 
before it the noon with the movement noon arabi is omitted it is the second person masculine plural subjunctive present tense fil mudhari mansub jama muzakkar hadir the verbal noun masdar from dhabaha yathbahu is dhabahan or dhabiha that is to slaughter baqaratan a cow the root word is ba qaf ra baqara it is a common noun ism nakira qalu they said it is a third person masculine plural past tense fil maadi jama muzakkar ghaib atattakhiduna do you make us the root word is hamza kha dal akhadha a is hamza istafhamiya prefixed interrogative hamza means what tattakhidu it is a second person masculine singular present tense fil mudhari wahid mudhakkar hadir from ittakhadha yattakhidu the verbal noun masdar ittikhadun which means to make or to hold or to do hudu wan amakari root word is ha za hamza it is a verbal noun Masdar used here as an object of a verb maf'ul that is the one being ridiculed qala he said a'udhu seek refuge root word is ain waw dal it is first person masculine singular present tense fil mudhari wahid muzakkar mutakallam from Uh, from a'za ya'udu the verbal noun is a'uzan which means to seek refuge refuge billahi in or with allah and that akuna i become it is first person singular deficient present tense fa'la naqis mudhari wahid mutakallam from kana yakunu the verbal noun masdar is kaunan which means to become min from or among al jahilin those who are ignorant or intolerant the root word is jim ha lam jahl from jahlatan verbal noun masdar it is masculine plural doer ism fa'il jama muzakkar its singular is jahilun or jahil qalu they said third person masculine plural past tense fil madhi jama muzakkar ghaib ud'u you call or pray The root word is dal ain wow. It is the second person masculine singular imperative verb. Fail amr wahid muzakkar hadar. From da'a and yadu, the verbal noun masdar is du'aan and da'awatan, which means to pray or to call. Lana for us, la is preposition harfajar and na is first person plural uh, plural jama mutakallam. Rabbaka your rab or sustainer root word is ra ba ba rabba is mudaf what is possessed ka is second person masculine singular pronoun dhamir of wahid muzakkar hadir yubayyin so he makes clear or explicit root word is ba ya noon it is third person masculine singular present tense fa'il mudhari wahid mudhakkar ghaib from bayyina uh, yubayyinu the verbal noun masdar is to uh, uh, tabyinan which means to describe or to make it clear lana for us ma hiya what is she ma is interrogative istifhamiya means what or how hiya is third person feminine singular pronoun dhamir of wahid muannas ghaib it is a dhamir munfasil uh, disconnected pronoun qala he said innahu indeed he inna is particle resembling verb harf mushabba bil fa'il it is an agent particle huruf amila who is the pronoun of third person masculine singular dhamir muttasal of wahid mudhakkar ghaib yaqulu he says root word is qaf waw lam it is third person masculine singular present tense fa'il mudhari wahid mudhakkar ghaib innaha indeed she in innahu there was a masculine pronoun muzakkar dhamir with inna where here in innaha we have third person feminine pronoun muannas ghaib dhamir baqaratun kaw la neither la neither it is a negation particle nafia faridun old or worn out multiparous this word is used for cutting it is also used for lack of meat the age at which meat is reduced the root word is fa ra dad 
from farada yafridu this is ism fa'il doer wala and nor bikrun is a young immature nulliparous an animal that has never given birth and not been burdened it is a describing noun ism sift awanun middle of age root word is ain waw nun it is used to describe middle aged women or cattle its plural is aunun baina between it is mudaf what is possessed zalika of that it is mudaf ilay possessor and masculine singular fa demonstrative noun isma ishara of wahid mudakkar baid faf'alu so you all do the root word fa ain lam fa is conjunction harf at if alu is second person masculine plural imperative verb fa'il amr jama muzakkar hadar from fa'ala if alu the verbal noun is fa'lan ma what it is a relative noun isme mausul to umarun you all are commanded or ordered the root word is hamza mim ra it is a passive present tense fa'il mudhari majhul because ta has the vowel mark dhamma on it and it is second person masculine plural jama muzakkar hadar from amara ya muru the verbal noun masdar is amran amran means to order qalu they said ud'u pray lana for us rabbaka to your lord yubayyin to make clear lana to to us ma what should be the analysis has been already discussed earlier launuha its color L- the root words are lam waw noon lam is a uh, mudaf what is possessed laun is mudaf what is possessed and ha is mudaf ilay possessor qala he said innahu indeed he yaqulu he says it is a fa'il mudhari or the present tense it is singular ma- uh, masculine present tense um, wahid muzakkar ghaib from qala yaqulu its verbal noun is qawlan which means says to say innaha it deed it is baqaratan a cow safra'u yellow color sad fa ra is the root word safratan is from verbal noun masdar sift musab musab sift mushabbah singular feminine wahid muannas faqiun bright good looking or shining fa qaf ain is the root word from faqun masdar verbal noun it is a, a, is a verbal noun isme fa'il law noha its color tasru pleasing good looking appealing seen ra ra is the root word this is the uh, present tense indicating present or the future tense fa'il mudhari singular feminine wahid muannas ghaib from sarra yasru masdar is sur surran or uh, sururan both are verbal nouns masdar meaning to make happy to its admirers an nazirin those who see it noon za ra is the root word nazrun is from masdar verbal noun plural masculine isme fa'il jama muzakkar singular of this is nazirun qalu they said ud'u pray lana for us rabbaka your lord yubayyin to make clear lana to or for us ma what should be here it inna indeed al baqara the cow all of these have been discussed earlier tashabaha look alike sheen ba ha is the root word tashabaha is singular masculine past tense fa'il madhi wahid muzakkar ghaib from tashabbaha yatashabbahu masdar verbal noun is tashabbuhan means to be of the same type mushtabah hona ala alayna to us ala is agent particle harf jar na is first person plural pronoun dhameer of jama mutakallam wa inna and indeed we in if this is conditional harf shart it is from singular masculine past tense it is an agent particle harf amila sha a wills it's a fa'il madhi wahid muzakkar ghaib from sha a yasha'u masdar is mashiatun meaning to want 
Allah who is Allah. If Allah wills, surely will surely will get it. La muhtadun will be among those who are guided. Definitely or surely. La is lam taqid meaning definitely or surely. Muhtadun is from verbal noun isma masdar plural masculine fel jama muzakkar singular of this is muhtadun. Qala he said innahu indeed he yaqulu he says this is fel mudare present tense uh, wahid muzakkar ghaib third person masculine singular Innaha it indeed it Bakaratan is a cow la should not be the lulan trained or doing work uh, should have not been used for work the lam lam is the root word from Zulun this is sift mushabba to see ru to plow um, fa wow ra is the uh, root word. It is second person singular feminine past tense. Fela mudare wahid muannas ghaib from asara yusiru masdar is isaratan meaning to plow. Asara yusiru masdar is isaratun meaning to plow. Al arda is the earth. It's a proper noun. Isma ma'arafa wala and not. Tasqi water uh, to, to water. Seen qaf ya is the root word. The second person singular feminine past tense. Fela mudare wahid muannas ghaib from saqa yasqi masdar is saqyun. Saqyun means to water the fields. Al hartha the field. Uh, ha ra tha is the root word. This is masdar a verbal uh, noun. Musallamatun, full or sound. Seen, lam, meme is the root word from tasliman. Masdar is passive particle, singular feminine. Isma maf'ool, wahid, muannas. La is not. Shiata is a blemish or mark or indication. Shiata is a noun. Isma, uh, ism. Fiha in it. Qalu, they said. Al ana now or at this time this is an adverb adverb isme zarf bil haqi with the truth ha qaf qaf is the root word b in the beginning is preposition harfajar al haq is a proper noun isme marifa fadha bahuha so they slaughtered it dal ba ha is the root word fa is conjunction harfat the baha is past tense fil madi masculine plural Past tense. Jama muzakkar ghaib from Zabaha yathbahu. Mazdar is zabahan meaning to slaughter. Ha is the mere pronoun. Wa is and harfiat conjunction. Ma not. Kadu they were near or seem to be. It is a fail. Uh, uh, it is masculine plural past tense. Madi jama muzakkar ghaib from kada yakudu. Mazdar is kaudan. Kaudan means to be near. Yaf aluna doing it. Fa ain lam is the root word from faala yaf alu. Masdar is fa'lan. Fa'lan means to work. Wa is and when qatal tum you all killed. Qaf ta lam qatala is the root word. It is second person masculine plural present tense. Fa'la madi jama muzakkar hadar from qatala yaqtulu. Masdar is qatlan. Qatlan means to kill. Nafsan, a man or one person or one life. Noon, fa, seen is the root word. Faddaratun, then you started blaming each other or disputed. Dal, ra, hamza is the root word. Fa is harfiat. Iddaratum was actually tadaratum. Ta has been changed into dal and dal has been merged in dal. Then to read it easily, Hamzatul Wasil has been brought in the beginning. So this has become idda aratum. Fela madi jama muzakkar hadar from from tadarayata from tadarayata darra'u masdar is tadarra'an meaning is to blame each other or someone. Fiha concerning it or in it or about it. Wallahu and Allah 
Mukharijun, the one who brought forth Kharajim, is the root word Kharaja from Ikharajan. Ma is what? Mazdar, Isma Fail, Wahid, Muzakkar, Fail, Naqis, Madi, Jama, Muzakkar, Hadar, from Kuntum, you were. Kana yakunu, mazdar is kaunan, meaning is to be or to happen. Taktumuna, concealing. Qaf ta meem is the uh, root word. Kaf ta meem is the root word. It is second person masculine, plural present tense. Fela mudare, jama muzakkar, hadar. From katama uh, yaktumu, mazdar is kitmanan. Kitmanan means to hide. Fakulna, so we said, idribu, strike him. Dod, ra, ba is the root word. Idribu is the second person masculine plural imperative verb. Fele amr, jama muzakkar, hadar. From daraba yadribu, mazdar, or the verbal noun is darban. Darban means to hit. Who is the mir of uh, wahid muzakkar, ghaib. The pronoun of um, third person singular uh, masculine. Bi ba'di, bi with a part of it. Ba ayn dod is the root word. B is a preposition, harfajar. Ba'da is majroor and mudaf, what is possessed. Ha is possessor, mudaf ilay. The mir is of singular masculine past tense. Wahid, muannas, ghaib. Kadalika, like this. Ka is harf, tash, uh, harf tashbih, meaning is like that. Dalika is a masculine singular far demonstrative noun. Isme shara wahid muzakkar ba'id. It is second person singular masculine present tense. Fele mudare wahid muzakkar ghaib. Yuhi revives is fele mudare wahid muzakkar ghaib. From ahya yuhi verbal noun masdar is ih. Uh, is ihya'un uh, it means to revive Allahu is Allah al mauta the dead Meem wauta is the root word singular of mayitun or mayit this is said to the dead wa yurikum and he shows you yuri is fele mudare present tense wahid muzakkar ghaib second person singular masculine present tense from ara yuri Masdar verbal noun is ira'atun. Ira'atun means to show. Kum is jama muzakkar hazar. Plural masculine present tense. Ayati hi his signs. Ayati is mudaf what is possessed. It is plural singular. Um, uh, it is a plural. The singular of it is ayatun. He is mudaf ilayh possessor, the mere of singular masculine past tense, wahid muzakkar ghaib. La allakum, perhaps you may. La alla is harf mushabba bil fail. It's, it's from huruf amila. Kum is masculine plural present tense, jama muzakkar hadar. Taqilun, use your intellect. Ain, qaf, lam is the root word. This is second person masculine plural present tense. Fele mudare jama muzakkar hadar from aqal uh, from aqala ya aqilu masdar the verbal noun is aqlan. Let's listen to the recitation of today's verses. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem Bismillahir rahmanir rahim وَإِذْ أَخَذْنَا مِيثَاقَكُمْ وَرَفَعْنَا فَوْقَكُمُ الطُّورِ خُذُوا مَا آتَيْنَاكُمْ بِقُوَّةٍ وَاذْكُرُوا مَا فِيهِ وَاذْكُرُوا مَا فِيهِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ ثم توليتم من بعد ذلك فلولا فضل الله عليكم ورحمته لكنتم من الخاسرين 
وَلَقَدْ عَلِمْتُمُ الَّذِينَ اعْتَدَوْا مِنْكُمْ فِي السَّبْتِ فَقُلْنَا لَهُمْ فقلنا لهم كونوا قردة خاسئين فجعلناها نكالا لما بين يديها وما خلفها وما خلفها وموعظة للمتقين وَإِذْ قَالَ مُوسَى لِقَوْمِهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَأْمُرُكُمْ أَنْ تَذْبَحُوا بَقَرَةً قَالُوا أَتَتَّخِذُنَا هُزُوًا قَالَ أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ أَنْ أَكُونَ مِنَ الْجَاهِلِينَ قَالُوا ادْعُ لَنَا رَبَّكَ يُبَيِّن لَّنَا مَا هِيَ قَالَ إِنَّهُ يَقُولُ إِنَّهَا بَقَرَةٌ لَّا فَارِضٌ وَلَا بِكْرٌ عَوَانٌ بَيْنَ ذَلِكَ فَافْعَلُوا مَا تُؤْمَرُونَ قَالُوا ادْعُ لَنَا رَبَّكَ يُبَيِّن لَّنَا مَا لَوْنُهَا قَالَ إِنَّهُ يَقُولُ إِنَّهَا بَقَرَةٌ صَفْرَاءُ فَاقِعُ لَوْنُهَا تَسُرُّ النَّاظِرِينَ قالوا ادع لنا ربك يبين لنا ما هي ان البقره شابه ان البقره شابه علينا وانا ان شاء الله لمهتدون قال ان انه يقول انها بقره لا ذلول تثير الارض لا ذلول تثير الارض ولا تسقي الحرث مسلمه لا شيه فيها قال الان جئت بالحق فذبحوها وما كادوا يفعلون وإذ قتلتم نفسا فادارأتم فيها والله مخرج ما كنتم تكتمون فقلنا اضربوه ببعضها كذلك يحيي الله الموتى ويريكم آياته لعلكم تعقلون Now let us begin the tafsir Surah Al-Baqarah ayah number 63 to 73 Translation and Tafsir of Ayah number 63 A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Wa idh akhadna meethaqakum wa rafa'na fawqakum al-tura khudhu ma ataynakum bi quwwatin wa dhkuru ma fihi la'allakum tattaqoon Translation And remember, when we took a covenant from you and raised the mountain above you, saying, Hold firmly to that scripture which we have given you and observe its teachings, so perhaps you will become mindful of Allah. Tafsir Hazrat Musa alayhi salam went to get the blessed book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when the Bani Israel took a golden calf as their God and started to pray and worship it. When Musa alayhi salam came back with the book Torah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they found the orders in the book very difficult. To avoid the difficulty of adhering to the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they started to make excuses that we do not accept this book. We want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should speak to us. Musa alayhi salam 
took 70 chosen people of Bani Israel to Mount Tur. It is also mentioned in Surah Araf, Ayah number 155. <laughs> Translation Moses chose 70 men from among his people for our appointment and when they were seized by an earthquake, he cried, My Lord, had you willed, you could have destroyed them long ago and me as well. Will you destroy us for what the foolish among us have done? This is only a test from you by which you allow whoever you will to stray and guide whoever you will. You are a guardian, so forgive us and have mercy on us. You are the best forgiver. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke to the 70 chosen people of Bani Israel and ordered them all to follow and act upon Torah. When they came back to their people, they told them that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered them to act upon Allah's book Torah, but they added something which was not from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They added that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has also said that follow the Torah as much as you can and what you cannot do, we would forgive you. Now Bani Israel did what was easy to follow and left what was difficult and they used to say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is merciful and kind. This is what is following one's own wishes and to follow what the ancestors did in their life. On this occasion, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raised the Mount Tur over Bani Israel and took a covenant that they would follow the Torah and Sharia with utmost conviction. It is mentioned in Surah Al-A'raf, Ayah number 171. وَإِذْ نَتَقَنَ الْجَبَلَ فَوْقَهُمْ كَأَنَّهُ ظُلَّهُ وَظَنُّوا أَنَّهُ وَاقِعٌ بِهِمْ خُذُوا مَا آتَيْنَاكُمْ بِقُوَّةٍ وَذْكُرُوا مَا فِيهِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ Translation and remember when we raised the mountain over them as if it were a cloud and they thought it would fall on them. We said, Hold firmly to that scripture which we have given to you and observe its teachings so perhaps you will become mindful of Allah. When Bani Israel feared that the mountain might be dropped on their heads, in Ibn Kathir explains that they did not want to bow their heads, but when the mountain came right on top of their heads, due to this fear they bowed their heads, but they were also looking up from the corner of their eyes as well. That's why they like they like to, uh, like to bow halfway that body is half bent and they can look up as well so they made the comment in the fear that if they did not agree to follow torah and sharia the mount tour would be dropped on their heads so to escape that death they made the covenant with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then they had Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's fear in their hearts and the fear of death was another factor. So they immediately agreed to conduct themselves according to Torah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's law, Sharia. Ibn Abbas writes that when they declined to accept Torah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's law, Sharia, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raised the Mount Tur on top of their heads so that they would listen to the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Vazkuru ma fihi means act upon the book Torah and learn all the orders and act upon these orders and inform others about these. What would be the benefit of this? La'allakum tattaqoon so that you would be saved from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's dissatisfaction and would not be punished and you have fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you have taqwa, God consciousness and become a pious person. Due to having Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's fear, you act upon all of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's orders. When you to adhere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's orders, you are increased in iman and your trust also gets stronger on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his promises, glad tidings and on his warnings that all these are true. The book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells a person the reason for his life. It helps people to know and recognize Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It introduces people to the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on us and the rights of people on us. Huququllah and Huququl Ibad. 
The book of Allah teaches about every aspect of a human's life. It provides guidance. It makes it easy to achieve hidayah and to walk on the way to achieve jannah. The human is saved from sins and in the hereafter he is saved from hellfire. Here we need to remember that in Islam you cannot force anyone to accept Islam but if someone after accepting Islam disobeys Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his prophet then they could be rebuked and even punished like Bani Israel were threatened of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's punishment when after believing they were disobeying Allah and his prophet Tafsir and translation of ayah number 64 ثم توليتم من بعد ذلك فلولا فضل الله عليكم ورحمته لكنتم من الخاسرين Translation Yet you turned away afterwards Had it not been for Allah's grace and mercy upon you You would have certainly been of the losers Tafsir Due to the fear of hovering Mount Tur over a tour over their heads, Bani Israel made a covenant with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to study the Torah and act upon it. But alas, they broke their covenant with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. ثُمَّ تَوَلَّيْتُمْ مِمْ بَعْدِ ذَلِكْ First of all, they refused to act upon the Torah when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hovered the mount tour over their heads and threatened them to be killed under the mount. They come around and accepted to adhere to the Torah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's rules and orders. But after watching such a big sign and making the covenant with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they forgot about the covenant with Allah. They broke the covenant and forgot the book and started to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَلَوْلَا فَضْلُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ وَرَحْمَتُهُ So, if not favor of Allah on you and His mercy on the other hand, you would be the one who is at loss or would be the losers. In this ayah, it is being said that at your disobedience, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would have punished you. But this is Allah's favor upon you that He has given you another chance to repent. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not give you this chance to repent, you would be لَكُنْتُمْ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ Then you would be amongst the losers. If someone who is disobedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and is a sinner dies without the chance of repentance, who would be more unfortunate than him that this world's temporary pleasures he has bought the forever uh, hellfire? What could be the bigger loss? Compared to him, that person is fortunate who has not been deviated from the hidayah by any source, any test, any shock or sadness. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us the ability to stay on hidayah and bless us to hold his book, the Quran, with all our strength. Ameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not make us from the ones who are late realizing to return to Quran. Before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbid, we are faced with a calamity and we are forced to hold the Quran. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with the ability to return the, to the Quran before a calamity hits. Ameen. Accept Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a sustainer, cherisher, master and wake Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's servants. This is the only way to salvation. Translation and Tafsir of Ayah number 65 وَلَقَدْ عَلِمْتُمُ الَّذِينَ عَتَدَوْ مِنْكُمْ فِي السَّبْتِ فَقُلْنَا لَهُمْ كُونُوا قِرَدَةً خَاسِئِينَ Translation You are already aware of those of you who broke the Sabbat. We said to them, be disgraced apes. Tafsir This ayah is talking about Bani Israel's breaking the law of Sabbat. In Ibrani language, Sabbat means Saturday. This was the day of ibadah, worship for Bani Israel. Sabbath was like Friday for us, but we have liberty to do our worldly chores before and after the Jummah prayer. But Bani Israel were forbidden to do any worldly chores on this day. In their religious law Sharia, they have to do ibadah or worship all day and have to keep themselves away from the things of their own interest. They were forbidden to catch fish on the Sabbath, but some of them made a plan and played a trick. It said that these were the people from one place called Leela Slum. These people ignore all Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's orders. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had forb- forbidden them to catch fish on the Sabbath. But rest of the days they were free to catch fish as much as they needed. 
It was a test for them that on that day, Sabbath, the fish used to be in abundance and was very easy to catch compared to the other days. In the same way, when the hunting was made banned in the state of Ihram, but as a test at that time, the animals used to be in abundance and were very easy to catch. Bani Israel played a trick that they used to spread their nets in the ditches they made as fish traps on Friday and get their nets full of fish on Sunday and did not do the fishing on Sabbath. When they felt more in power due to these tricks, they started to do fishing openly on Sabbath. There was also an order in the Torah that whosoever would not be respectful to this day would qualify for obligatory killing. It is said that there were three groups of Bani Israel. One was the one who played tricks to catch fish unlawfully. The second was the one who advised people not to catch fish unlawfully. And the third was the one who did not catch fish but did not advise people not to catch fish unlawfully and used to say to the ones who were stopping the ones catching fish that why are you stopping them? They are not going to listen to you. They are going to be punished. The people from second group would answer that we stop them in a hope that they might stop and we would be honored and successful in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we have fulfilled our duty. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَقُلْنَا لَهُمْ كُونُوا قِرَدَةً خَاسِئِينَ We said to them, be disgraced apes. The ones who were playing tricks to catch the fish unlawfully, they were turned into apes. This was a punishment for clear disobedience. Ibn Abbas writes that these apes died after some time. They did not eat anything. They did not produce any offsprings. They just rubbed their noses and died. The monkeys nowadays are not from their race. These ayahs are for us to understand. As some people even today say, how is it possible that the human became monkeys? They believe in Darwin's theory of evolution that mon humans were monkey before and with the time they have become human. Whereas with time this theory is proving wrong and as it was always a theory and never was a law. We will see in the next ayah why this story is mentioned in the Quran. Translation and Tafsir of Ayah number 66 فَجَعَلْنَاهَا نَكَالَ لِمَا بَيْنَ يَدَيْهَا وَمَا خَلْفَهَا وَمَا عِذَةً لِلْمُتَّقِينَ and we made it a deterrent punishment for those who were present and those who succeeded them and a lesson for those who fear Allah. Hazrat Qatada rahimahullah has explained that at that time there was order from the sky. All of you become monkeys and they all became monkeys. This was a group of people who were deceitful and played tricks to deceive law. When this group turned into apes, monkeys, the group of people who used to forbid them from wrongdoing said to them, We did tell you that your deceit and tricks would get you in trouble so they could only nod their heads. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says here that we would make this incident an example for the surrounding communities and in history for those to come. They became a sign of admonition for all people so that they would not be make a mockery of the religion. They would not play tricks to de deceive the laws of religion. They should stay away from eating haram. They should not change Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's orders with deceit and tricks. And after hearing about this, they should correct their ways and become God-fearing people. Bani Israel used to think they are beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because they are the children of Ambiyas and are the chosen ones. In this ayah, they are told that this is only a wishful thinking. As whenever you have crossed your limits, whenever you have disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have been punished for your disobedience and deceitfulness. This is a lesson for us as well. If we would not learn the Quran and understand it and act upon it, we would be asked about it on the day of judgment. If we chose some orders and ignore the other orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, saying that Allah is forgiving, kind and merciful, or if we make excuses that we cannot live without the interest in this time, or saying the covering the head and body is not necessary as it's your heart which should be pure and clean. We should be very fearful about these that we might be punished severely in this world also. If we don't learn from these stories in the Quran, we would be in great danger. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all the tawfiq to adhere to all the sharia laws. Translation and tafsir of ayah number 67. 
وإذ قال موسى لقومه إن الله يأمركم أن تذبحوا بقرة قالوا أتتخذنا هزوا قال أعوذ بالله أن أكون من الجاهلين Translation And remember when Moses said to his people Allah commands you to sacrifice a cow They replied Are you mocking us? Moses responded I seek refuge in Allah from acting foolishly Tafsir Bakara means any cow This is the reason for the name of this surah In the background of this surah's name there is a story We do not get an exact information from the Quran and Sahih Hadith In Ibn Kathir and from Israeli traditions there is a story that there was a very wealthy person in Bani Israel his name was Amir He did not have a male child. He only had a girl and his nephew. His nephew was waiting for his uncle to die. But when Amir did not die, he was waiting for his inheritance which he could get o- uh, only get when his uncle would die. So he made a plan to kill his uncle. He thought he would kill the uncle and would marry his daughter and then all his uncle's wealth would be his. He planned to kill his uncle and blame his tribe of cl- killing his uncle and would claim for the blood money, money as well. He was very happy thinking that he is very fortunate but this was his wishful thinking his lack of knowledge the haram wealth is never a source of happiness on the contrary it's always a source of unhappiness and bad luck Qarun also was proud of his haram wealth he was Hazrat Musa alayhi salam's cousin he did not believe in Hazrat Musa alayhi salam he was Pharaoh's minister and a friend Qarun was sunk into earth with his wealth due to his proudness and his haram wealth The nephew planned to kill his uncle and then he killed his uncle and threw his body at the gate of the castle. It is said that this castle was a whole city and the good and pious people of Bani Israel were inhabited in this city. These pious Bani Israel were not happy to live with the other group of Bani Israel. They were involved in wrongdoings. The pious Jews used to close the city gate at night. They did not let any criminal in the city. The nephew threw his uncle Amir's bod- dead body in front of the gate and blamed the pious people of the city. He started making allegations that the people of the city have killed his uncle and claimed the blood money from them. The people refused to accept that they killed his uncle. The boy was adamant that his uncle was killed by the people of the city. He started to prepare to fight with them with the help of his friends. The people of the city went to Hazrat Musa alayhi salam and explained that this boy is making an allegation that we have killed his uncle whereas we have not killed anyone hazrat musa alayhi salam made a dua to, to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answered his prayer and ordered inna allah ya'murukum an tadbahu baqarah allah commands you to sacrifice a cow they responded in awe and said qalu atattakhizuna huzuwa are you joking with us What is the similarity between finding the killer and sacrificing the cow? We are trying to find a killer and you are ordering another murder and that of a cow. Are you mocking us? We are talking about finding the killer and you are ordering us to sacrifice a cow. Hazrat Musa alayhi salam said, A'udhu billahi an akuna minal jahileen. I seek refuge in Allah from acting foolishly. I cannot do this when it is concerning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's orders. Is this an occasion for a joke? Sharia law is descending and at this time joking is only for the illiterates. You have asked me to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that you know the name of the killer. This is a serious matter. A man has been murdered. This is not the time for jokes. Order was Tathbahu Baqara. Sacrifice a cow. Any cow. Baqara is appellative noun means any ordinary cow. It was a simple order. They could have sa- just sacrificed a cow, but they were living with Egyptians and had love of cow in their hearts. They did not want to do it, so now they started to make excuses to escape this situation. We will read about this in detail in the next ayah. Translation and Tafsir of Ayah number 68 قَالُ دُعُ لَنَا رَبَّكَ يُبَيِّلْ لَنَا مَا هِي قال إنه يقول إنها بقرة لا فارض ولا بكر عوان بين ذلك ففعلوا ما تؤمرون Translation 
they said call upon your lord to clarify for us what type of cow it should be he replied allah says the cow should neither be old nor young but in between so do as you are commanded tafsir now if they would have just sacrificed an ordinary cow that would have been enough but there were two reasons for their questions about the cow number 1 they had the love of cow in their hearts they did not want to kill a cow as when musa alaihi salam went to mount tur for 40 days to take torah they made a calf out of the gold they had and started worshiping it number 2 the killer thought that if uncle would come back to living and take his name as a killer so he was also making excuses to put the sacrifice on hold they said to hazrat musa alaihi salam qalu du'u lana rabbaka yubayyin lana ma hi call upon your lord to clarify for us what type of cow it should be allah subhanahu wa ta'ala replied innahu yaqulu innaha baqaratul la farid wa la bikr the cow should neither be old nor young awanum bayna dhalik but in between fa fa'alu ma tu'marun so do as you are commanded allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying here now the order is here What are you thinking about? When Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam was ordered in his dream to sacrifice his son, he straight away sacrificed his son. He did not think that it was only a dream. Why should I take my son's life? He did not think to ask Allah that that oh Allah is this dream was from you or from shaitan. Neither he questioned nor did the son ask any questions and you are asking all these questions for the sacrifice of a cow. The rest of the conversation would be in the next ayahs. تفسير of verse number 69 قال ادع لنا ربك يبين لنا ما لونها قال انه يقول انها بقره صفراء فاقع لونها تسر الناظرين translation they said musa pray to your lord on our behalf and tell us clearly what should be the color of that cow now coming on the color musa alay salam said allah says it should be of dark fawn colored which pleases the admirers tafsir when bani israel asked the color of the cow allah subhanahu wa taala said bright and dark fawn color which impresses and pleases the admirers and fill their hearts with happiness because the egyptians used to worship this type of cow and they too had come with the love of this type of fawn colored cow had a lot of lot of faith in this color of cow they said there are so many cows of this type make it more clear the orders of religion deen are simple whatever is being told should be followed when they increase the number of questions then the restrictions from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also started increasing it has been described in ayah number 70 translation and tafsir of verse number 70 qalu du'u lana rabbaka yubayyin lana ma hi innal baqara tashabaha alayna wa inna insha allah la muhtadun translation they again said Pray to your Lord that He tells us what should be the type of the cow. This cow has put us in doubt, and we are in confusion. They said, Musa, tell us more details of the cow. There are a lot of fawn-colored cows, and we don't know which one to select. They were thinking that this cow would be special if and it can tell the name. There were other reasons too. The killer also did not want it to be identified, and they had the love of cow in their hearts. Tafsir started saying to Musa alayhi salam to pray they did not use to pray for themselves like us they wanted further clarifications from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said if Allah wills inshallah we will find it it is said that if they had not said inshallah then they would have not found this cow till the day of qiyamah they connected the act of sacrificing the cow to allah's will so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opened the door of guidance for them and due to the blessings of saying insha allah they got the cow in the next ayah there is more detail translation and tafsir of verse number 71 qala innahu yaqulu innaha baqaratul la dhalulun tuthiru al-ard wa la tasqi al-harth مسلمة لا شيء فيها قال الآن جئت بالحق فذبحوها وما كادوا يفعلون. Translation: He 
said it is allah's order that the cow is not trained to do work till plow the the soil what are the fields the cow that just sits idly not do any work but should be healthy and without any blemish or mark they said now you have made it clear and now you have brought the truth now you have made clear that the cow should not be working should be healthy and without any blemish complete shining fawn color after that they sacrificed it it appeared that they were not interested in sacrificing the cow when the order of sacrificing the cow came it was not for any particular cow any cow could have been uh, sacrificed to fulfill the command but they made lots of excuses and asked useless questions due to which the 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 canonical law and finding this type of cow became difficult for them at one stage they thought they will not find this type of cow to sacrifice there were some people who wanted to sacrifice all were not bad people it is a lesson for us also that without any reasons we should not ask illogical or unnecessary questions in religious matters we should follow simple things as they are it is not correct even in worldly matters to criticize and make excuse in religion is very bad unnecessary questions should not be asked like one sahabi asked three times should we do hajj every year nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam remained silent but on asking the question repeatedly nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam said if i would have said yes then you would have been in great difficulty translation and tafsir of verse number 72 وَإِذْ قَتَلْتُمْ نَفْسًا فَادَّارَأْتُمْ فِيهَا وَاللَّهُ مُخْرِجٌ مَا كُنْتُمْ تَكْتُمُونَ Translation And remember another incident when you killed a man and started disputing as to who killed him. Allah made it known what you concealed. Tafsir وَإِذْ قَتَلْتُمْ نَفْسًا فَادَّارَأْتُمْ فِيهَا Amir was killed by his nephew in the darkness of the night while everyone slept. Then the nephew placed Amir's body in front of the fort of good people, accusing them of murder and demanding ransom by blaming good people. Firstly, he wanted to collect some money from them. Secondly, he wanted to defame them and ruin their reputation. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed whatever they were hiding. Bani Israel were concealing many things in their hearts, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to everyone by ordering the slaughtering of the cow. They were hiding the love for the cow in their heart. They used to tell each other, rather, it was the killer who reminded everyone, don't slaughter the cow, otherwise trouble will befall us. We will be beaten and tormented. Due to their excessive questions and dilly-dallying, their true nature was revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He showed it to everyone. The killer was concealing his crime, but he was exposed after slaughtering the cow. It is mentioned in the next verse. Surah Al-Maidah verse 101 states, O you who believe, do not ask about such things while the Quran is being revealed. In tubdalakum tasu'ukum, do not ask such questions. What will happen if you ask? Truth will be disclosed, which would displease you and it will also be made a part of Sharia. A person asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Man abi? Who is my father? Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not reply. He asked again, Man abi? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stayed quiet. He asked a third time. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, So and so, son of so and so. He became embarrassed and his face turned pale. He and his mother were humiliated. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala concealed this matter, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala often hides our sins too, then it is an order that the person stays quiet too. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbidden the disclosure of sin. What will happen otherwise? On the day of judgment, everyone will come forward as a witness against us. Why should we gather evidence against us in this world? When someone proclaims his sin, then another person might feel compelled to indulge in the same. Since others are doing it, I can do it too. Hence, it is forbidden to disclose sins. Translation and Tafsir of verse number 73 فقلنا اضربوه ببعضها كذلك يحيي الله يحيي الله الموتى ويريكم اياته لعلكم تعقلون translation so we said strike the dead body with a piece of the slaughtered cow that's how allah brought the dead to life to show you his signs so that you may understand his power to restore life tafsir 
It is said that there was a pious and righteous person and he had only one small child and his father was old. Before he passed away, he left a calf to roam in a forest and entrusted it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep it safe for his child until he grows up and takes care of it himself. We will also read in Surah Al-Kahf the story of a righteous father whose treasure for his children was kept safe by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Khizr alayhi salam was entrusted with the task of repairing the broken wall uh, over the buried treasure so it would not be stolen and the children could dig it out when they grow up. Similarly, this child was very pious. He used to chop wood from the forest and whatever he earned, he would divide it into three portions. He would give one to his mother, keep one for himself and give one portion in charity. When his mother saw him working so hard, she told him that there is one cow in the forest that is his trust and he should go and bring it. The boy was bringing his cow from the forest. At the same time, the people of Bani Israel were searching for a cow and they saw his cow. They liked this cow very much and they thought that this is just like the one they were looking for. Bright, golden color, beautiful, never used for work and spotless. It was as bright as the rays of sun, extremely beautiful. The boy was very obedient to his mother, so he did not agree to sell the cow under any condition. They, Bani Israel, kept raising the bed and eventually they offered enough gold to fill the cow's hide. That is, when it gets slaughtered, they will stuff the hide with gold and give him that. The child still did not agree until he reached home and his mother made the deal. In this way, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala returned the trust of a righteous father to his pious son with abundant treasures. Subhanallah. On the other hand, due to the excessive questions, dishonest intentions, love for the cow that they concealed in their hearts and the nephew's fear of being caught, due to all these reasons they suffered greatly. That is, they tired themselves searching for the cow everywhere and it cost them dearly. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَقُلْ نَضْرِبُوهُ بِبَعْضِهَا Meaning, when the cow is slaughtered, then hit the body of the victim with a piece of flesh from it. Strike him with it, then he will come back to life and name his murderer. Therefore, this is how it happened and the deceased named his killer after coming back to life. He pointed towards his nephew and named him and the killer was apprehended. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this verse, كَذَٰلِكَ يُحْيَ اللَّهُ الْمَوْتَ وَيُرِيكُمْ آيَاتِهِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَعْقِلُونَ This is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring the dead to life and He shows you His signs so that you may understand. Bani Israel's concept of, year, of hereafter was extremely flawed. They did not believe in being resurrected, ba'atibad al mawt, that they will be brought back to life after dying. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed them that they should eliminate the love for the cow from their hearts because it is not the God. If it was ma'bud, God, then it would have saved itself from being slaughtered. When it couldn't save itself, then what harm can it do to others? No torment struck you with its slaughtering, no trouble befell. Instead, its slaughtering ended up being a source of mercy rather than an inconvenience. Because the name of the killer became known, it curbed the great tribulation that was spreading. The killer was found and the one slaughtering did not experience any harm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to everyone what they were concealing. What should we do when we receive a command? We should immediately obey the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They also learn that if you do not act according to the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala immediately, then how much trouble they will experience, how much effort they had to make in search of this cow. They angered Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well, wasted the rewards of obeying immediately and purchased the cow at a higher cost. They used to think how they will be resurrected after death so they were shown how the dead body came back to life and told the name of the killer. Similarly, you will be raised on the day of judgment and your deeds will be accounted for. It should have happened that after seeing this miracle, they would have increased in their faith, fear of Allah and taqwa. But what impact did this miracle have on the hearts of Bani Israel? We will learn about it, inshallah, in the next lesson. Recap. Now let us see what all we have learned from today's verses for our actions. We learned from verse 30, 63. Khudu ma, uh, ma 
we have to hold fast to the Quran. To hold fast means that we have to learn it well and understand it with translation, tafsir, tajweed. We have to act according to it and convey it to all humanity. We have to recite it every day, obey every single one of its commands, sami'ana wa ata'ana. And as soon as we hear a command, we act on it immediately. The Quran is a book of action. It's not for seeking forgiveness for the dead or for making into amulets. It is stated in the verse, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ We have to read, learn and act on and convey the Quran to others because it is obligatory to learn and obey its commands. The benefit of this will be that the fear of Allah will be created in our hearts. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ when a person gains taqwa, then he acts on every single command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and follows every sunnah. He fears the torments of the grave and the hereafter. In verse 64, we learn that we should never turn away from the Quran. We will be deprived of Allah's grace, mercy and blessings if we leave it. And then we will be the losers in this world and in the hereafter. From verse 65, we learn that we have to take care of the commands of the Quran and obey every single one of them. It is a simple command and should be followed just like that. No excuses, arguments or tricks to be done to avoid acting on it. No changes to be made in the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or modifications in the religion according to our desires. In verse 66, we understand that we have to seek a lesson from the events that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us. Learn from them for our action. From verse 67, we learn that we should not ridicule the commands of religion and mock those who teach the religion. We have to learn the knowledge of religion seriously and respect every command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From verses 68 to 71, we learn not to question excessively in worldly matters or religious matters. Excessive questioning causes a hindrance in action. As soon as we hear the command of, Allah, of religion, we have to act immediately. This makes action easier and rewards greater. From verses 72 and 73, we learned that we should not hide from people and do wrong, any sin, any bad deed, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows everything. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants, he can disclose our wrongdoings in this world, our sins and shortcomings revealed to everyone. Therefore, we should only fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and believe that we will be resurrected on the day of judgment and be held accountable for every single deed. It is not at all difficult and impossible for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to resurrect all humanity. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to act in the best way. Homework. Please note down today's homework. Number one, memorize the translation, root words and singular plural from today's verses. Question number two, from the following, please identify huruf e jar, preposition, huruf e mushabba bil fail, particles resembling verbs, and huruf e ghair amila, non agent particles. Min kum, la hal, in, alayna, innaha. Question number three, khudu ma atayna kum bi hold firmly to what we have given you. How will you put on this portion of the verse? How will you act on this portion of the verse? What is the benefit of holding firmly to the book? Explain. Verse number 63. Question number 4. What punishment did Bani Israel receive for disobeying the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Why are these incidents told in the Quran? Verse 65 and 66. Question number 5. What was the wisdom and advantages behind Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's order of slaughtering the cow? Question number 6. In today's verses, what have you learned for your actions from the attitude of Bani Israel? Take care of yourselves. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Nashadu an la ilaha illa anta. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilaik. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.